Hi everybody, this is Musicianship 1 class for Tuesday, February 18th, a snow day. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate second species counterpoint, and I'm also going to assign you two penny assignments for Thursday. You should have your textbook handy as you go through this video. We are going to start on page 188 in the textbook. Take a look at example 10.1 on page 188. This is an example of second species counterpoint. Second species basically means that there are two notes for every given note. So you see the cantus firmus is in whole notes, the counterpoint below it is in half notes. The one exception is measure 10, just before the end, where two whole notes are used. At the ending of a second species counterpoint, you can use a whole note or you can use two half notes in the second to last bar. The last bar must always be a whole note with both notes ending on do. Measure 10 here can be two half notes or a whole note. Let's take a listen to example 10.1 on page 188. You should notice a couple of things as you look at this. Um, first of all, this is the first time we have a sense of meter or metric hierarchy, where we have a downbeat, which is the first beat of every measure, and then we also have an offbeat. And the downbeat is, of course, stronger than the offbeat. There are also some dissonances used in this second species example. Notice that there is a dissonance of a second in the first measure, a fourth in measure four, and even a diminished fifth in measure nine. There are some things that are true about every dissonance that is used here. First of all, the dissonance is always on an off beat. You never have a dissonance on a strong beat. Secondly, every dissonance is a passing tone. We sometimes abbreviate passing tone just as P. A passing tone is approached by step and left by step in the same direction. So whenever you use a passing tone, uh, it's three notes in a row that are stepwise, either going down, as in measures one and two, also going down here, notice we have B flat, A, G, that's another passing tone, and then in measure nine, A, B natural, which is a diminished fifth, C sharp, we're going upward stepwise. So a passing tone always goes by step in the same direction, three notes in a row in the same direction always moving continuously in a straight diagonal line. Now, when you start to write second species, um, you can create a first species framework. In other words, we can look at the downbeat and the downbeat. And for example, here, moving from D to B flat, we have a skip of a third. And you want to try to think about creating thirds in your counterpoint from downbeat to downbeat, so you have the opportunity to use passing tones on the offbeats. So, in any case, you can only write dissonances in second species, A, on an offbeat, 
B as a passing tone. Notice also that there is passing motion going from measures 2 to 3, B flat A G. We don't circle this sixth because it's not a dissonant passing tone. We would call it a consonant passing tone because a sixth is not a dissonance. Um, so that's just no big deal. So looking at um, second species and what happens on the offbeats, we can use dissonant passing tones or consonant passing tones, or we can use a consonant skip. Uh, an example of a consonant skip would be measure five. We skip from G to E against a G in the cantus firmus, and both um, pitches are consonant with the cantus firmus, an octave and a third. Another example of a consonant skip is found in measure eight, where we have a third and an octave. If you write a skip or a leap, both notes must be consonant with the cantus firmus. The only place you can use a dissonance is if it's connected stepwise to the notes before and after it. Um, you, can't, you can't leap into a dissonance and you can't leap away from a dissonance. Let's continue on to the next example, which is example 10.2 on page 190. So now we're on page 190. And here we see a little, another um, counterpoint, and we see a little more detail about passing tones and consonant skips. Let's go ahead and listen to this example. It sounds like this. So you notice a few things here. You can start with a rest, if you like. This example starts with a rest and then an octave. Um, notice that we have passing tones in measure two, measure four, and measure seven. Um, each of these are dissonant passing tones and they're all circled. They're also marked with a P. Um, you'll notice that the passing tones are unaccented, and that just means that they fall on an offbeat, never on a downbeat. And then if we look at measures four and five, we see this idea of preparation, dissonance, and resolution. And what that means is that the preparation is the note that comes before the dissonance, what's going to happen on the downbeat, and here it's a consonant third. The dissonance is the passing tone, the fourth, and the resolution is a consonant sixth. So preparation and resolution must be consonant. And remember that the passing tone must be approached and left by step. The same thing happens in measure seven. There's a preparation of a third, a dissonant passing tone of a fourth, and the resolution of a sixth. Remember again that um, in this uh, second to last measure, there's a whole note here that can be a whole note, or if you're writing your counterpoint and you have a way to do it, you can put two half notes in that measure. And again, the last measure must always be a whole note. Let's continue. We're going to go over to page 191 and example 10.3. Example 10.3 shows us another type of uh, dissonance that we can use, and that's a, called a neighbor tone. Um, if you look in measure four, we have a dissonance of a second here, and that's called a neighbor tone. And 
a look at the shape here. A neighbor tone goes up a step and back down to the original note. So it is still approached and left by step, but it returns to the same note. So it'll go up and then back down. Or in the case of measure 10, we can go down and back up. Um, we distinguish neighbor tones by um, calling them an upper neighbor or a lower neighbor, depending on which way they go. So UN here stands for upper neighbor. And LN stands for lower neighbor. So if you use neighbor tones, please label them as upper or lower neighbors. Notice again that we have the preparation and then the neighbor and then the resolution. In other words, the downbeats on either side of the neighbor have to be consonant. And remember that it must be approached and left by step. In this case, we have FGF and then in the following measure, FEF, a lower neighbor. Um, the lower neighbor in measure 5 does not need to be circled, even though I just circled it, because it's a consonant neighbor. Uh, the sixth is consonant. Uh, but whenever you write a dissonant neighbor, please circle it and label it as an upper neighbor or a lower neighbor. Um, notice also, if we back up to measure 3, that there is a passing tone of a dissonant fourth. When you write second species counterpoint, I know you're going to be eager to use these new dissonances that are available to you, and I want to ask you to uh, be careful about using more passing tones than neighbor tones. So I'm going to say more passing, fewer neighbor. And there's a reason for that. The reason is that when um, you use a neighbor tone, you're returning to the same note. So if you look at the first species, I'll do this in a different color. If you look at the, uh, the first species structure here, so we're just looking at downbeats here and here. Well, the first species background structure there is a little bit boring because we have the same note F repeated, right? And then even on the next downbeat, we have another F repeated. And then down here in measure 10, we have a G on the downbeat and a G on the downbeat again. Um, and it just makes the line kind of stagnant. So we're going to listen to this one and um, you'll find it sounds, I, I think, kind of boring. Let's move on to page 192. This is the uh, triad number one, and this is going to be your first penny um, for Thursday. So this is part of penny, um, I believe, I don't have it in front of me, I think it's penny E, it might be F, but anyway, it's your next penny for Thursday, February 20th. Okay. Uh, that's a zero, February 20th. And what you're going to do here is simply to label the intervals between the staves, just like you always have, circle the ones that are dissonant, and then label passing tones, neighbor tones, and consonant skips. All right, so we'll start this together well, as together as this really is in this situation, um, you notice that the first, the first measure has been completed for you. We have a unison, a dissonant second, which has been labeled as a passing tone, and then we have a perfect fifth, so a consonant on the downbeat, and notice that that perfect fifth is approached by contrary motion, as it should be. From there, we have a sixth, 
and then another sixth. Now, it looks like we have a passing tone here in the counterpoint, but you don't have to circle it or label it or do anything because it's a consonant passing tone. You only need to label and circle dissonant passing tones and dissonant neighbors. Continuing in measure three, we have a sixth on the downbeat and then a third. Because there is a skip here um, and both intervals are consonant, just label that as a consonant skip, CS. So that's all you need to do for this, and uh, that is a penny worth one point for Thursday. Um, at this point, I'm going to stop and then start another video uh, so that the videos are easier to upload. So uh, please go on to the next video. See you soon.